countdown for Chandrayaan-3. India's much-anticipated space mission is underway. It will lift off by the Bahubali rocket LVM-3 today at around 2.35 p.m. from Sriharikota. Now, this moon mission is a follow-up one after the crash landing of the Chandrayaan-2 back in September 2019 due to a software glitch. Now, the main goal of the tree is to land the rover on the lunar surface on the 23rd of August. If successful, India will become the fourth country after Russia, the United States, and China to achieve a successful soft landing on the moon. Now, the new mission aims to demonstrate India's capability to safely land and explore the lunar surface. The spacecraft is expected to reach the moon's south pole and operate for one lunar day, which is approximately 14 Earth days. And तो भारत में चंद्रयान 3 की चंद्रयान 3 की लॉन्चिंग के लिए रिवर्स काउंटिंग की गुंज सुनाई दे रही है कुछ ही घंटों बाद भारत के श्री हरिकोटा से ये ऐतिहासिक लॉन्च होने जा रहा है। CNN News 18's Harish Upadhyay gets us this exclusive report on ISRO's latest lunar mission, Chandrayaan-3. Take a look. India's ambitious lunar mission, the Chandrayaan-3, is all set to lift off on the 14th of July. If after six weeks, Chandrayaan-3 lands successfully on the moon, India will be only the fourth country to achieve the remarkable feat. So a lot is riding on ISRO. After Chandrayaan-2 ended in failure and tears in 2019, ISRO has ensured that Chandrayaan-3 does not repeat the same mistakes of its predecessor. Chandrayaan-3 will carry advanced scientific instruments to study the moon's surface, mineral composition and lunar exosphere, contributing to the overall understanding of our celestial neighbour. First of all, by that, uh, demonstrating this one, the India has acquired uh, one more now, uh, the technology of landing in a celestial body. We are able to land. That, uh, this technology we have gained, we have acquired. This is the big lessons we have. So it, it will have a future uh, perspective of landing, sometimes man landing on the moon. Like that, many, many such uh, human presence in space. And that, it will be giving very good uh, information. The technology it will give, that is a one point. Second point is scientific uh, uh, in the measurements, hmm. that is science part. Yes. And uh, by doing this one, even though we are doing the science hmm. about the moon by observing from the from a particular orbit, hmm. and we are doing now by landing, we can do the in situ hmm. experiments, hmm. the science, in situ science. Yes. That more science we can. We will get it by having such type of missions about the moon for, uh, for the future generation. Chandrayaan 3's success will enhance the country's prestige and standing in the global space community. It demonstrates India's scientific and engineering capabilities, contributing to its soft power on the international stage. With Harish Upadhyay in Bengaluru, Chetan Dhalla for CNN News 18. So, sir, if you could just explain us as to how this Vikas engine is made, what is exactly the process, how, about, how it's followed, and how did your team work towards uh, the engine? Right. Uh, we have been working with ISRO since 1985, as rightly put. And uh, Vikas has been uh, one of the main uh, workhorses uh, and the hardware for which is manufactured at Godrej uh, Aerospace since uh, almost two decades now. Uh, similar engine uh, is also will be going up uh, tomorrow. 
Uh, Vikas engine is uh, largely made up of uh, steel and uh, the process starts with uh, cutting the sheets on the laser and then uh, rolling them into various shapes, uh, welding and then uh, creating the, uh, the thrust chamber as we call it and then there are on the thrust chamber there are many other uh, machine components like pumps, turbines which are uh, assembled. What we do is we uh, manufacture as per uh, the design given by ISRO and uh, uh, then uh, do a sub-assembly and a sub-assembled hardware is then supplied to LPSC where it is integrated into the stage. The ability to handle parameter variation or dispersion was very limited. So what we did this time is simply expand that further. Look at what are things that can go wrong. So we instead of success-based design in Chandrayaan 2, we are doing a failure-based design in Chandrayaan 3. What all can fail and how to protect it. So this is the approach that we are taking. So for that we did many things. One, we expanded the area of landing half a kilometer by half a kilometer to 4 kilometer by 2.5 kilometer. 4 kilometer along the track and 2.5 kilometer width. Anywhere it can land. So it doesn't limit you to target a specific point. It will target a specific point only in nominal conditions. Four by two point. Four kilometer by two point. And there is one benefit from Chandrayaan 2 that Chandrayaan 2 had a very high resolution camera on board. It's called orbital high resolution camera. This camera gave very good pictures, almost 28 centimeter high resolution image of the entire moon. With that, we were able to find out uh, the landing site much better away than last time. The countdown for Chandrayaan 3 has started and it's going to be a historic day for the country and ISRO. It could open up opportunity for the country to prove that it has successfully mastered the art of soft landing on the surface of moon. And ISRO not forgetting to ensure that this also acts as a moment to inspire hundreds of young minds. And that's the reason you have the viewers gallery opened up. More than 6,000 people expected there. A lot of them school students who come from uh, various states and cities. I have a bunch of students from Hyderabad here who are here for the launch. How exciting, how inspiring is this? So, uh, like, it's beyond our imagination. It's like this uh, man-made thing which is going on Mars all by itself, discovering everything. And we just control it from where they are finding every resources possible. And we're getting, we can find numerous things on Mar uh, Moon and it can be a base for our future expeditions. This is actually very interesting and exciting to have this experience as school students. And as we're really young, this can be really inspiring and we all can aspire to uh, uh, take our career in the science path. Now there are six payloads on this uh, spacecraft. Uh, what really stands out for you in terms of the scientific exper uh, experiments planned in this? So uh, as, for the, as for the six payloads, uh, I, I mainly like the rover because the rover named Pragyan because it is the one which is going to do most of the research on the on the moon. It's going to last for 14 days, which is one lunar uh, yes. day, and it is going to do all the research and uh, pro prove the knowledge, to, provide the knowledge to ISRO. True. Uh, let Let's also take a survey here. How many of you are interested in space science actually? Okay. Why? So space is a vast vast subject and this much many things which are not explored and it's beyond our imagination there are many things that we don't know and it's it's wonderful experiencing and exploring all of them so space is something that we have to explore and okay. to gain our knowledge Chandrayaan-3, India's ambitious lunar mission, will lift off from the Satish Dhawan Space Centre in Sri Harikota on the 14th of July. If successful, India will become the fourth country to achieve the remarkable feat of landing a spacecraft on the surface of the moon. As we count down to the big launch day, here are five facts about Chandrayaan-3. Chandrayaan-3 is a continuation of India's previous lunar mission, Chandrayaan-2, which ended in failure and tears. The objective is to demonstrate India's capability of soft landing on the moon by delivering a lander and a rover to the lunar surface. During Chandrayaan-2, the lander crash-landed during descent due to a technical failure. 
India will be hoping to join an elite list of nations who have actually managed to land on the moon, that is the United States, erstwhile Soviet Union and China. The actual launch vehicle Mark III is a three-stage medium lift launch vehicle. Christened as the Bahubali of rockets, it's the most powerful rocket ever developed by ISRO. This is what will be used to launch the Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft. LVM-3 consists of two solid fuel boosters and a liquid fuel core stage powering it. The solid fuel boosters provide the initial thrust, while the liquid fuel core stage provides the sustained thrust to propel the rocket into orbit. The spacecraft consists of three parts – the lander module, the propulsion module and a rover. The integrated spacecraft weighs around 3,900 kgs. The main function of the propulsion module is to carry the lander module from launch vehicle injection till the final lunar 100km circular polar orbit and separate it. The lander will make a soft landing at a specific site on the moon and deploy the rover. The rover, in turn, will carry out chemical analysis of the lunar surface. The rover will be moving only within a limited range, that is, within the sight of the lander's cameras. All data collected by the rover will be transmitted first to the rover and then to the orbiter and then back to Earth. ISRO is targeting a soft landing sometime in the middle of August. Landing dates are determined based on the availability of sunlight at a particular landing spot. ISRO has designed the Chandrayaan-3 lander and rover to function for 14 Earth days, which amounts to one lunar day. After that, it will be a period of 14 Earth days of darkness at the landing site. So the rover and lander will not be able to recharge their batteries during that period. While there have been several moon landings, Chandrayaan-3 will be the first to land on the south pole of the moon. So a successful landing of Chandrayaan-3 on the moon's south pole will be a demonstration of our technical prowess and spacefaring ambitions. The lunar south pole has long held the interest of scientists and space experts because there is a possibility of presence of water there. The rocks and soil in this region could provide clues to the early solar system. This will be the first time that any test would be conducted on the South Pole, so any data and conclusions drawn are set to be studied keenly across the world.